We have a great episode for you today. We're talking about some early bust picks and some early values based on average draft position. And Jason gets a little hot and bothered about Kareem Hunt again. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the video. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, June 16th. Big show, big, big show. Big show. Pretty, big show. pretty, pretty big. It's big. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers, excited to be with you. Early bust and value picks on today's episode. And uh, probably a lot more than that. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got some best ball tips for best ball mania on today's show as well. Yeah. Uh, do we have news on today's show? A little ah, bit. Who needs that? A little bit news. I'll just, it, you know, here's the news. Hunter Renfro signed an extension. There's your news. Yep. Congratulations, Hunter. Yeah, I mean he uh, twenty one million guaranteed. There you go. They they extended Renfro. They traded for Devontae Adams and they extended Derek Carr. So they they're and, and according to Devontae Adams, Derek Carr and Aaron Rodgers are more similar than all of us think. There's some yeah. There's some sure. interesting stuff going on there where Derek Carr is like Aaron Rodgers and Brian Edwards is like Devontae Adams. It's a lot, yeah, a lot this of weird from, stuff. Yeah, it's from Devontae, though, you know? Oh, I know. Uh, but I'm just saying, like, they all have This wasn't have from you. Weren't you reporting the Devontae Adams thing with uh, Brian Edwards? Isn't that a Mike exclusive? No, that's, that was, no, that Derek, was Derek Carr. Carr. Derek Carr. These, these two just love each other, and they want to talk, you know, kindly about you know teammates oh, yeah they just it's it's kind of a ridiculous situation where you're trying to comp someone else to hall of famers yeah yeah i, I don't think Derek Carr is quite aaron Rodgers, but it was fun to i mean th this is off season this is the time of year when we are so desperate for news that the smallest fluff piece a reporter reports that a reporter said something <laughs> so uh, a couple reminders for you before we jump into the quick question today. UltimateDraftKit.com, if you want to check that out. We have the UDK and the UDK Plus. The Draft Analyzer tool will be releasing on July 1st, and that will let you uh, import your team, your draft, uh, see what grades uh, you receive from the three of us, and some analysis on your team, how to improve it for the upcoming year, strengths, weaknesses, a lot of other metrics that will be illuminating, dare I say. And some new upgrades. Yes, yes. And then footclangiveaway.com, giving away some signed jerseys right now. If you want to check that out, it's free to enter. Quick question today comes from Twitter. Do you prefer divisions in redraft leagues? So you talk about league formation, putting teams into divisions, and then also the same question about dynasty leagues. Um, I, I like divisions personally. I especially in dynasty format, you know, redraft, whatever. I don't, I don't care that much. The whole point of a division to me is building rivalries amongst players within the league. And you know, that mimics what the NFL does, which is you have teams that are kind of your arch rivals. Um, if you want to go crazy with it, like, I mean, we have divisions and we play those division mates twice during the course of the year to build that rivalry. You play everybody else once. That's how we do it in our our keeper league. I, I don't mind if you do resets of those divisions after a certain amount of years just to keep things fresh, but I like them. How do you go about doing the reset? Do, like, do you just draw names out of a hat? Grab it in a hat, man. I think you have to, but I know why you asked that because you're basically saying, look, you finally get to the point where you reset your divisions in a league you pull names out of a hat. It's just chance. Maybe two of the same teams end up in the same division. It's not what you actually wanted to have happen. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess you could do it differently, but 
We have never really reset them, though. No, we've had so, our divisions for a long, long time, and I hate them, which <laughs> is actually a feather in the cap for divisions. I don't hate them because I think it's bad for fantasy football. I hate them because, for instance, you're in my division, Andy, and I hate that. It's a good reason to hate it. It is yeah. the rivalry. It yeah. is the passion. It is the thing that is is so upsetting like, I don't care about half of the league mates. I care about my division mates, and it drives me bonkers, which is why we play fantasy football, to be driven bonkers. So yes. I, I like divisions. I'm I'm a fan of them, um, but they are infuriating. You have a yeah. thought, Mike? I just, I'm, I'm very for them. I remember uh, when I finally got in your league here, we, you know, we, we shuffled up the divisions, and then I had a particular manager in in my division where, like, I kept beating them. And then, uh, like, I even went to the point of where if I didn't make the playoffs, I went back and I, like, would look, oh, did I actually beat them? And I, I racked up this, like, 10-0 and record, and, and it was this huge deal. And I made a, I had a shirt where <laughs> I was <laughs> inferring I drink this person's tears. And it's just... It, it, I and forgot now, about like, the shirt. And great. now, like, we care. Like, that. I mean, that guy cares when we are playing because I talked so much crap for such a long time. It makes a lot of... It, it makes it better. Yeah, the head-to-head -head yes. aspect of those weeks, divisional weeks. We The way we do it is we start the season. First three weeks of the year, you play your three division mates. Last three weeks of the year, when it's crunch time, trying to make the playoffs, you play your division mates. That is uh, very fun. Yeah, it, o it only works, though, in leagues that you're going to have the same managers for a long period of time. If it's, yeah. if it's, you know, your work league and they, you know, have a bunch of turnover and, you know, there's four new managers every year, then then just do away with the divisions. Because the whole point is rivalry and tradition. So if a keeper league, a dynasty league, it makes a lot more sense. Now, Kyle brought up the idea of rivalry trophies, like in college football, right? I mean, the, sure. the, the state schools face each other, and they get their territorial cups, and, um, you know, more things to brag about slash shame people for. I, Kyle's Trophies are very fun. Yeah. Um, any other things that we need to talk about? Any breaking news there, gentlemen? No? Nope. No, nothing. Okay. Any other Hall of Famers that have been built out of uh, offseason season? News reports? No. They don't just give sure. away the just MVS if you ask Mike. Oh, just MVS. <laughs> yeah. They don't give away the gold jackets during the off season. They they have to wait. You have to finish the career for that. Um let's talk bus. Bus. See? We're we're talking we're talking bus. That's what that drop just said. Uh early bust picks. We've each picked one of them. And uh, we'll be doing value picks as well. So, I mean, I'll, I'll go first. That's fine. Go ahead. Uh, it, it, it's probably, you know, I, I took a peek at your guys' picks. I know that we share similar opinions on this one. Um, this is not maybe a full bust. I would say this is a soft bust. Is that a thing? Well, it's, is that. These are all three of us have players being drafted at the top of drafts, and we are just we're seeing these guys are being overdrafted. And look, calling someone a bust pick doesn't mean that that player sucks. It doesn't mean that that player won't be valuable for a fantasy team. It means playing the market of the average draft position, which is everything when it comes to fantasy football in, in the draft. It means they are being overdrafted of where we believe they will finish, which then means they have not lived up to their hype and they have busted. And this is a player a lot of people are very passionate about, so I understand that. Yeah, I love this man, but I uh, agree with the pick. Yeah, and it's Najee Harris running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Last year he finished as the running back four. He's being drafted as the running back five. And look, it was a massive workload as a rookie. 307 carries, 74 receptions. The argument for this... Uh, for him not paying off on draft value to me is uh, an argument of odds. It's can he repeat what he did 
that level of volume translating into top five finish. Look, repeating as a top five running back in fantasy football is extremely difficult to do. And I'll, I'll give you the numbers behind that. Over the last five years, only seven of 25 top five running backs repeated that the following year. So that that's low odds in a neutral playing field. Um, but you also end up in a situation here where there are some fair storylines where, look, he wasn't an efficient runner on the ground. Big plays are not necessarily, at least big runs, I should say, are not necessarily Najee Harris's forte. So he doesn't um, erase the concern of inefficiency to me. Uh, and you look at, you know, Six rookie running backs historically average fewer than four yards per carry with 250-plus touches since 2010. Now, two of them were elite the next season. Lev Bell and then, what was it, David Montgomery? Montgomery. Yeah. The other four were pure bust. Trent Richardson, Zach Stacy, Leonard Fournette in his rookie year, and then um, is there one other one? Yeah, uh, you got Najee now, so we'll see what happens with Najee. But that's a question mark is – can the efficiency improve? Can the touchdown numbers go up if he doesn't receive that massive 74 uh, receiving yards or 74 receptions and 400-plus and receiving yards? And that's the question. Now, we all have him ranked as a very solid RB1. So this is not, you know, Barry Najee Harris. This is the three of us won't have him on our teams because of where he's going in drafts. We have him ranked at RB9. So you're talking about... a you know, an RB1, a back-end RB1, a ton of volume. But even the team has come out and said they look at this situation with Najee Harris and they don't necessarily view it as sustainable, giving him that level of volume. So the coaching staff came out, said they want to manage the workload, they want to manage the health. He said, his words, there are going to be downs he's not out there. And Mike, you made a good point the other day. They may just take him off the field, and that may not reduce his total touches. And and so, yeah, maybe things are okay. But you have variables at quarterback. You have variables with efficiency. And so, to us, I think he is just a tier too high in those rankings. And, yeah. you know, I know you guys echo that sentiment. Yeah, and it's not even a matter of, oh, he's not going to finish as high as you draft him. It's what are you not drafting when you draft Najee? What is Najee's ceiling versus Austin Eckler going right next to him or uh, you know, the other players that are on the board when Najee's going middle of the first round? So I, I would agree uh, completely with your sentiment uh, and, and Mike's that I love Najee. Like, he was one of my favorite college prospects. I think he's awesome. I think he's going to be good, but I don't think he will pay off on that draft cost and and just so people understand how extreme the volume was he was on the field for 980 snaps last year that is the second most for any running back in the last five years total so this was a very this was an every single down heavily dependent on Najee Harris offense which look that's a feather in your cap if you can do that that's a feather in your cap as a rookie if you can go out and be that dependable for your team so he will be heavily involved but I think that that fantasy finish is going to come down a little bit. Um, Ten total touchdowns last year. You know, he, he can definitely hit that number again. But um, but yeah, RB nine, RB ten. I mean, let's we're still being we're still being fair to to Mr. Harris. Yeah, I think I think we have him pegged where about he'll finish. Yeah, which is so not where I good would work be team. All right, I will go next because this man introduced the show. He is potentially the best quarterback in the league. And my bust pick is Patrick Mahomes. Oof. Oof. Uh, just like Mike said, this doesn't mean that the player is bad, and it doesn't mean that they are going to suck and not be uh, a valuable fantasy commodity. But do not draft Patrick Mahomes. Full stop? Full stop. Don't draft him. Um uh, anywhere near where he's being drafted look if you are going to take a quarterback early um we've talked a lot about I, this is common knowledge now the the you know drafting quarterbacks later is far more valuable for fantasy football but there is still a point where you can draft a quarterback early and it can pay off if you took josh allen last year you had to pay quite a bit to get him and it was worth it he dominated the quarterback position he was the clear-cut quarterback one and you got a positional advantage great 
That's what has to happen if you're drafting Patrick Mahomes, who is, on average, the second quarterback being drafted. He's going as high as the third round, um, as low as the fourth round. These are valuable running backs and wide receivers that you are giving up to draft a quarterback. Now, if you do that, he better be the quarterback one, or the you know if he is the quarterback two, there's got to be a gap between him and the rest of the field. You have to have dominance. Patrick Mahomes has not been a top three quarterback since his 50 touchdown uh, year three years ago. He hasn't been in the top three. Now he loses Tyree Kill, 25% of his targets, 36% of his air yards, and 100% of the magic. Tyreek Hill. Oh, 100%. That's a bold uh, it's, it, That was rude to Travis Kelsey. Yes, very. Um, but it sounded really nice. It and did. so I said it. Um, but losing Tyreek Hill is, is, a, is a big deal. Uh, over the last decade, there have been seven quarterbacks who have lost a fantasy wide receiver one. And on average, those quarterbacks has, have lost two and a half fantasy points per game. And that's... It sounds like not a big deal, but if he loses two and a half fantasy points per game, that puts him at like quarterback eight to ten. I mean, that is not okay drafting a quarterback that's going to finish still top ten, but not as a separator and a difference maker at the position when you're giving up a third or fourth round draft pick. And there's been great quarterbacks. Peyton Manning was one of those seven. Um, you know, he lost six points uh, off of his. Fantasy finish. Uh, fantasy, well, or yeah, week to week, week to week uh, performance, and it's not just Tyreek Hill. They are putting three new wide receivers in place. Uh, you know, they they lost three of their four. No more Demarcus Robinson. Targets. No more Demarcus Robinson or Brian uh, Byron Pringle uh, and Tyreek Hill. So now you've got three new guys coming in. So once you pop, you can't stop. Well, you can when the can is empty and he's gone. Yeah. So that's usually when we stop eating our Pringles is when we run out. I call sleeving it, but yeah. Right, you know, full sleeve. Um, so, you know, this is this is the situation. I, I think Patrick Mahomes is, Mahomes is probably the best quarterback in the league. If I were to be starting a uh, franchise, he would be the one I would, I, I would take with the first pick. Um, if you, you know, you got to do it all over as a GM right now, drafting every NFL player, but for fantasy where he's going in the third or fourth round, he is not going to pay off on that value. Um, since his 50 touchdown season in 2018, uh, his yards per attempt have gone from 8.8 .8 to 8.3 to 8.1 to 7.4. And now he loses Tyreek Hill. He's not I going to, to pay off on that value. I need to follow up with a question for you. All right. I wanted to look last year. And um, last year, Patrick Mahomes went at 209 on average. Or I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, 209 on, uh, on average. And then Josh Allen went at 311 last year. And they flipped this year. Mm -hmm. Now Josh Allen is going at 206. Mahomes is going at uh, 305. Um, do, are you willing to wrap Josh Allen into, the, into that same argument is my question. Because this year, Allen's going higher than Mahomes went last year as the first quarterback. And we even saw it in the mock draft episode we just did on Tuesday. He went high. Mm -hmm. And look, I know that Allen has been very, very good, but it almost feels like when you look at those numbers and you see that they flip-flop spots year to year, that is the game you're playing. Yeah, I mean, I would not draft Josh Allen where he's going. However, I would not call him a bust pick because when you look at the quarterbacks who have a chance to lap the field, to separate and say, I'm scoring – three or four more points than second place. Um, Josh Allen is one of the few. I, I don't think Mahomes, this version, 2022 uh, Tyreek hill uh Patrick Mahomes, is going to be the one that throws another 50 touchdowns. Mike, why don't you share your bus pick with us? Because, All right. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to listening to this. I We have not really talked extensively about this player, I don't feel like, so I want to hear these details. Yeah, and this uh, like this one just stood out to me of my ranking compared to where this player is going in average drafts, and it is A.J. Brown, new wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles. Again, he's a, he's a top tier player. There's a reason the Eagles gave up a first round, a first and a third to get him, and they gave him a huge bag of money. He's a good player, and he's going to be good for fantasy. But right now. On underdog, he's being drafted as a top 12 wide receiver. And in sleeper, 
he's being drafted as a top 10 wide receiver. Like people love wow. AJ Brown and I do as well, but I do not like this draft price for him. So let's look look back at what the Philadelphia Eagles did last year. From week 8 on, the Eagles averaged under 24 passing attempts in the in the per game. That's that was dead last in the league. The wide receivers scored the third fewest points in the league, and they had 11 total receiving touchdowns. Now, that's why you would go out and you would get A.J. Brown. And then you can make the argument, well, A.J. Brown has never been a vo or a, a volume-wide receiver. He's been efficient. In his years in, in Tennessee, he was the dude, and he just he would have huge plays, uh, and he would, you know, he'd usually end up, when he was on the field, end up good for fantasy football. But we took a look and at like what, what quarterback numbers have sustained in a, a real true top 12 wide receiver. And what we found out is that wide receiver ones, their quarterbacks were averaging 264 passing yards per game and completing an average of 66% of their passes. All right. So, and just to illustrate a little further, 90% of wide receiver ones came from an offense that averaged 235 passing yards. Jalen Hurts averaged 210 passing yards per game. So that's a pretty wide dispar uh, disparity between those two numbers. And even if you project an uptick, which I do, I project an uptick for, for Jalen Hurts. He's got A.J. Brown now. Like, he has a true number one wide receiving option. But to go from 210 passing yards up to that 235 per game, I just don't see that playing out. And that's like, that's not where I have Hertz going. My projections, I gave Hertz an improvement up from 210 up to 226 yards per game. And those numbers, they just, they don't lead to a wide receiver one fantasy finish. And that's because AJ Brown is being drafted so high. I just, it's an overdraft. He'll be, he'll have good spike weeks and everything. But what you are giving up in your opportunity cost is just it doesn't make sense to me and it sucks it like calling a bus pick is it as a fantasy football analyst is not really a fun thing to do cuz we don't want we don't want to crap on these players AJ Brown's fantastic but for our game I think people are overdrafting him let, let me amplify your point with two things Mike one over the back half of the year that 210 number that you moved him up from that was 178 over the back half of the year right um, yeah yeah yeah. now you know the other thing i'll mention is that they changed play callers halfway through the year um from their head coach they went to shane steichen and he has just recently been endorsed as the play caller again for the new season so that doesn't mean like it is a chicken or egg thing to an extent of hey yes. how do you you know how do you get to those numbers without a wide receiver one and then the wide receiver one is how you get to those numbers so that is part of it, but going from, you know, run heavy 178 a game to 230 plus, that is an even bigger leap. I do think they'll meet in the middle with this offense. We like Miles Sanders. We like Jalen Hurts being able to run the football. Um, but, but yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a gamble with the jersey change for A.J. Brown. Um, in Philadelphia. And on top of all the things, like of all the studies, the, when wide receivers change teams, you know they generally have a dip in their production. It now the ADP you know, shocks Stephon, me. The ADP is crazy. Yeah, he could. I am in on AJ Brown, except not really at Apparently all. Apparently not <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. I I think he's going to be fine. Like I I I statted him out. I'm like yeah. I I looked. I think the volume is there. He's going to be a good wide receiver. And then when I see where he gets drafted, I'm like, how is that a possible <laughs> outcome? Like I I completely agree with this. Um, he is being way overdrafted and i love jalen hurts like i i i i'm you know uh poster on the wall levels guilty as charged you remember when lamar jackson just broke fantasy football in 2019 yep and had he was just so far and away the number one fantasy asset in fantasy football i'm not saying jalen hurts could or would do that this year but in that situation he did not have a top 40 wide receiver, and he wow. did not have a top three tight end either. Mark Andrews was the tight end for that year. So uh, there's mobile. So you can break fantasy football and break somebody's fantasy team when they draft the options for them. Exactly. So, yeah, A.J. Brown being drafted that high is uh, 
too rich for my blood. And I will say, like, I know nobody wants to say a negative thing about A.J. Brown, and I get it because we know that he has the ability, but, man, he disappeared a lot last year. And you did have a quarterback that that is a pretty, uh, at least accurate quarterback, and you still had this just oddities of dis- – like, the year before, he was very consistent. But, like, last year, I don't know if it was the injuries. I don't know if it was just the – you know, you can talk about Derrick Henry and unlocking the offense. Derrick Henry's not in Philly either, for the record. But um, I, I do I do think it's it might, crazy how inefficient he was. It might be I'm glad good for the AJ, record on that. <laughs> it might be good for AJ Brown to have a somewhat inaccurate quarterback because when I watch AJ Brown, those impossible catches, man, he gets them every time. <laughs> but you put that ball in his hands, he drops it. <laughs> oh, I see. I so, like this narrative. Yeah. Come on, Jalen. Just give him a barely a chance to catch it, and he'll come down with it. Yeah. Do give not that ball put it, just a little wobble. Yeah, do, little do, wobble. Do not give him a real smooth ball. <laughs> a little wobble. Okay. <laughs> uh, quick break, and then we're back with our value picks. Okay. I you know, I think we we disagree a lot on this show. I think mm-hmm. it's part of why the show is is valuable to people because we we are going to at a minimum discuss both sides of an argument. Yeah, you can agree with one of us, you can disagree with one of us. Um, we disagree a lot. Now, this was, I don't know, I don't know, a, <laughs> an early bust segment where we all agreed. It was it was pretty pretty weird to look in the dock and be like, man, I really like that. A, makes sense. I like your guys' picks. Yeah. Well, because the, these are our individual busts, right? Like where we for the draft kit, we get together and we have at least two of the, two of the three of us agree that this player is a bust, and usually we take great pleasure in this particular show in crapping on someone else that, like Andy loves this guy, and I'm like, oh, this is my chance to shine and show why Andy's being dumb. Yeah, but, yeah, we do. I mean, that's the best. <laughs> We do that all the time. So that was just interesting to be on the same page with our individual bus picks. Um, value time. Values. Okay, value picks. We'll see if we're on the same page with these. I'm. I'm thinking. Nope. But we'll see. <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, I'm starting with Brandon Cooks. Now, I want you to understand something from the get-go. Brandon Cooks is my value pick here. We might all agree on this one, actually. But yeah. this is going to be very serial-intensive discussion. Okay? So you start with – you got General Mills. All right? He is your quarterback. So you're beginning from oh, that place. I already like where this is going. And um, – Kyle has been, you know, he's really, he's reaching here, but he's calling, you know, Brandon Cooks the Raisin Bran, all right? Because sometimes, instead of drafting for oh, upside. Brandon. Yeah, Brandon. Okay. I know. It's a. I, okay. It's not me. Okay. It's him. I didn't even get the connection. Uh, it's not. It's barely there. It's just a just one strand. <laughs> just wait. Just wait. Just one strand. Okay. Oh, it gets worse. But, okay, continue. But listen, instead of drafting for potential upside, sometimes your team needs a little fiber. Okay? okay, you need to stay a little regular, and that's the Brandon Cooks pick in your draft. It's guaranteed production, all right? It's guaranteed. It's keeping you regular. Okay, some and, people need that. Yeah, and look, Raisin Brand itself, you get, you stay regular, but it does have a sweet taste to it, right? I mean, I personally, I think they put. You're not in on raisin bran. No, I'm not in on raisin bran. I've had so, cinnamon toast crunch, but continue. Cinnamon toast right, crunch I, does not a, keep you regular, Jason. I stay in this regular. analogy. I'm choosing to believe that the Houston Texans are the raisins because raisins are just they should be thrown in the garbage. Oh, you hate raisins under all circumstances. That is correct. See, I I can deal with. I don't want a hot raisin. Don't put it in my cookies. Don't put it in a muffin. Don't put mm. don't put a hot raisin anywhere. But you cover that you thing in it, chocolate or yeah, you can cover it in yogurt? chocolate. No, actually, I'm not really into that either. Oh, I, but in my cereal, I'm okay with it. I'm gonna put it. So that you way. want it like you want them frosted or, or um, chilled by the milk so they can break your teeth and taste bad. <laughs> there are some risks. Yes, there are risks with Brandon <laughs> Cooks. Excellent point. Um, but let me let me just. <laughs> Let me just remind you and myself how good Brandon Cooks has been because this is called the off-season Brandon Cooks discussion. 
a thousand plus receiving yards in six of seven NFL seasons, a top 20 finish in six of seven seasons, and more mind blowing than that. If you look at all wide receivers through their age 28 season, because Cooks turns 29 in September, I can't. I, you better not be lying here, Kyle. You can throw me under oh the bus gosh. if you want to. More receiving yards through their age 28 season than Jerry Rice, Brandon Cooks has. More receptions than Calvin Johnson through age 28, and the same yards per target as Randy Moss. So, holy crap! You know this is. Uh, this is raisin bran with some sugar poured over the top, like the they used to, to it. do it. And um, again, you've got the solid rapport with General Mills now. Where this breaks down is unfortunately raisin bran. That's from Kellogg's. Okay. Oh so no! So General Mills didn't make it. So I don't know why you didn't find me a similar brand cereal from yeah. General from General Mills. Who makes oat bran. Oat bran? I don't know if I want any of that. <laughs> It's got to be just as good as Raisin Bran. But look, I mean, the receivers going around Brandon Cooks in average draft position, because this is what value means, right? You explained, Mike, eloquently what a bust pick truly means. It's, it's are they going to pay off on, on the draft value? Brandon Cooks' is draft ADP right now is wide receiver 29 on underdog. It's 31 on sleeper. What? Like... <laughs> I just told you he finishes the top 20 fantasy wide receiver in six or seven years. They just gave him the bag. They just paid him. And his draft ADP, players going around him, Juju, Drake London, Amon Ra St. Brown, Darnell Mooney. If you want to go into every week as irregular as possible, those might be the picks to make. So Brandon Cooks, like I've never been as in on Brandon Cooks as I am this year. I picked him up in a dynasty startup recently. Uh, because he drops a lot in those, but I, I look, it's it's just, and he has a, a rapport with with uh, specifically with General Mills, Davis Mills, that led to more targets than he had previously seen. So I like it. I think he's a value pick at that ADP. Yeah, uh, I I dig it. We do have an update here from the Deucers. There is General Mills. They produce something called a raisin nut brand, mm. and from the box art it looks like a it just looks like a fake knockoff cereal well no because that well, real fiber one is also general mills it is so i mean that's but pretty, there's no going for fiber you gotta have brand there, no though. we want the word brand jason oh, oh i forgot about that magical connection yeah it does look like the raisin nut <laughs> brand while the box art could use an upgrade they do yeah. seemingly cover their raisins with some sort of either sugary substance or ah. yogurt i'm not sure hmm. so you may be in on the raisin nut brand jason okay raisin nut brandon cooks got it got it all right we can depart from this <laughs> oh, no and move on to uh jason's irresponsible value oh pick. how dare you you were just talking about how this wide receiver is drafted in the 30s and he spent his career finishing in the top 20 well let me tell you about the man, the myth, the legend, Kareem the Borgogan Killer Hunt. Okay, Kareem Hunt <laughs> is good at football. He has had five seasons in the NFL, three of which he was a top 12 running back. The other two, he only played half the season, and during those stretch, he was basically a top 12 uh, running back. So the first six games last year, Hunt averaged 15.7 fantasy points per game. Okay, that's what he did last year. That's the same as Leonard Fournette, to give you context for how good that was. Through that stretch, he was the running back eight already. Then he got injured and basically missed the rest of the season. He came back for a minute and got re-injured. And I know it's unfair to take a six-game sample size and say, well, he would have been good over the course of a whole season. Not unfair if he did it in 2020. That's right. That's right. He did play the whole season the year prior. And he was the running back 10 on the season. So he was the running back 10 as a Cleveland Brown. Then he was the running back eight, got injured. Okay, that that stinks. Mike, now, are you picking up a condescending tone right now? <laughs> yeah. I, this is I'm, aimed at one man, and he's behind. I'm shocked. Well, first off, like I had my memory had wiped that he finished as the running back 10 it, in 2020. I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I forgot about that. Everybody has because he's being drafted as the running back 32. He's in the eighth round. You want to talk a value pick? If Chubb were to get injured, Hunt would be great, even greater. But this is, he's already done it with Chubb. And now the offense, 
theoretically, gets better with Deshaun Watson. And the only argument that I've heard against Kareem Hunt, outside of a ridiculous like, oh, he's got a $0 cap, dead cap fee, which, okay, that doesn't, that doesn't make any difference on the field, is that Deshaun doesn't throw to the running back. That crowd. Deshaun Watson. Is there a crowd? Is that is that a crowd? It's is a there- crowd of at least one. That was Kyle's. <laughs> oh no! That was Kyle's argument. <laughs> it's well, true. Oh, it is true. Well, let me ask you: Did David Johnson average two point eight receptions a game with uh, Deshaun Watson? Oh yes, he did. That same year, did Duke Johnson average two point four? I'm sorry, two point five receptions a game with Deshaun Watson? Yes. Now, when Kareem Hunt was a top ten running back, did he have more or less than those numbers? Oh, he only had 2.4 receptions a game. So I think Deshaun Watson could throw the ball the same as he already has done. I rest my case. I uh, wow. Breaking news, Jason is going to be re- releasing an exclusive <laughs> Cream Hunt only podcast. <laughs> it's going to be called Hunting the Borgogan. Mm, good and title. it's going to be coming out very oh. soon. Uh, wow. Sponsored by Raisin Nut Brand. But... <laughs> Look, I, the, the ADP is ridiculous, and and what it does, I agree. What it does show, and it makes sense on a psychological level, that if you are not the primary number one, like the easy to project number one running back, like Nick Chubb is on that offense, mm-hmm. and you have an injury shortened season in which your fantasy finish isn't printed in you know big font, you're going to be more forgotten. That's just what's going to happen, and so Kareem Hunt didn't deliver over the course of a season not due to his play on the field but due to injury limited opportunities and so he's going to be more forgotten period and then Dearness Johnson's making headlines in the offseason by getting a contract and you know Deshaun Watson is the storyline for the Browns so Kareem Hunt is certainly not being talked about very much and let's keep it that way it will be, yeah. The let's, eighty let's, people say let's that. Let's keep right? it that way, Foot Clan. Let's just uh, grab him in the eighth round. I don't, I don't want to take him in the fourth, fifth round. Now, but uh, if he drops the eight, sure thing. On that podcast that you'll be releasing soon, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, will you be selling the ultimate cream hunt draft kit? Yeah, but it comes with a T-shirt too. Oh, it does. Oh, absolutely. Okay. You got to represent. Okay. All right. Uh, cream hunt value pick from Jason Mike. Let's hear your value pick. All right. I want to talk about. Van Jefferson of the Los Angeles Rams, who last year finished as the wide receiver 35 and is currently being drafted on underdog as the wide receiver 64 in the 12th round and on sleeper in the 16th round as the wide receiver 70. Now, I truly believe that Jefferson is a value pick. I'm not saying that he's going to finish as a top 24 guy, but he is going to return a massive value if you're drafting him as the wide receiver 64 in a best ball tournament. So last year, you know, look, Van Jefferson's already had at least some success. Like I said, high fantasy finish, finished uh, in his sophomore year with 50 receptions, over 800 yards, and six touchdowns. Look, he's seventh in yards per reception. He saw more red zone targets than Adam Thielen, Jamar Chase, CeeDee Lamb, and Debo. Unfortunately, he only caught four of them, but Look, that happens. If you remember the, uh, he had some rough that, games. A yes, super yeah, drop, he, a super drop game. Yes, yeah, he he has some drops. Um, but I was gonna say, like, if you remember, uh, I think it was the sophomore year or something of of Mike Evans, and like all of a sudden his touchdown production just dropped, and it was they just he didn't catch the the red zone targets, it, and then he caught them the following year. So it was as simple as that. And like Van Jefferson can improve. Like it's his third year going in the league, and. Last year, before Odell Beckham was on the team, Van Jefferson was averaging basically six targets a game, and like that, those are some solid numbers for someone you are drafting uh, with a pick that is essentially meaningless. And you're getting targets from Matthew Stafford on a high-powered offense. And then once Beckham was traded the, to the team and really established himself, those targets dropped to about three per game. So his his actual opportunities getting cut in half. And now looking at what has happened this year, Allen Robinson is their high-priced, you know, free agent acquisition. the Odell Beckham acquisition. Right. And I think, so like last year's experiment was, does Odell Beckham still have it? Turns out he does. Now, Allen Robinson, does he still have it? That is absolutely to be determined because last year on the field, Allen Robinson looked like just an absolute garbage can who did not care and did not want to be playing football. 
And meanwhile, then Van Jefferson like would have a tremendous opportunity if Allen Robinson has, in fact, lost a step. He already knows the offense. Allen Robinson, I mentioned, you know, wide receivers changing teams doesn't really – it often is worse for them than it is a an upgrade for them. And so I just – I I don't see a way that Van Jefferson being drafted as the wide receiver 64 doesn't bring your team value, especially when you're talking like – is your second flex player a guy who can go off at any particular time six games as a top 24 wide receiver? Like Van Jefferson is is free and will give you production. They call him the MBS of the West. Mm. Did you know that? I, j- sure. I just heard that. Um, yeah, this one is – I don't really have an argument against your contention that he could have a better fantasy finish, but me personally, it's just like, meh. Like, I don't care. Like, I, I don't care about Van Jefferson because I don't think that he can get to a place that I'm, like, excited about. So I just think I'd have him. He might be okay, and then I might cut him. Yeah, but, if he finishes, but maybe I'm wrong. If he's drafted as the wide receiver 70 and he finishes as the wide receiver 44, okay, you drafted something better. But that's not really helping best your t- – And that's where I was going to yeah, say. And, and yeah. Mike brought it up earlier. But if it's a best ball, you know that he's – the the route to him getting to that wide receiver uh, 35 or or wherever he might finish is going to be a little volatile. It's going to be he caught a big bomb touchdown, and so that's great for best ball for how late he's going. And the the only other reason I can kind of get behind this is because it it somewhat insinuates the demise of Allen Robinson, which is really a <laughs> it's all he's rooting for now, guys. Wait, do. <laughs> Well, that's not true. Kareem, I'm I'm rooting for Kareem Hunt. No, no. Let's <laughs> let, let's lay this out here. Did we or did we not make a dynasty transaction recently that may change your opinion on the future of Allen Robinson? Uh, we made or a may dy- re, may be dependent on the yes, fact. Yes, chicken or egg. I think it was uh, based on my view of Allen Robinson. We did complete a dynasty trade. It was. I, I I'm curious what people would think. Yeah, I I don't remember the picks. The uh, uh, I got a twenty twenty second two thousand twenty four second. Yes, a two thousand twenty four second round pick and Juju and Smith Juju Smith Schuster for Allen Robinson. That yeah. was the trade. So Allen's coming to town for my team, and then um, you know, obviously the the Rams in and of once they lost Robert Woods last year, it wasn't enough to have Cup and Jefferson. Um, they had to go and add Odell Beckham. Uh, they have a. There's, well, back, I think they added Beckham before. It was like they added him like the week before Woods tore ACL, if I remember it right. I believe that is. I believe that is my memory as well. I believe it's my memory. Yes, you believe that. But some, you may. And, so even even then, I mean, that, that's even more making my point of they were not content with their receiving core as it was, and then in this off season, they also weren't content with the receiving core as it was, which makes sense. And they went out and got. Allen Robinson, and then we'll see if he's done. Because if he's done, Van Jefferson's going to be vastly outperforming this number. There's just no way that he can't. Yeah, I I do Agreed. think that Odell Beckham Jr. ends up on the Rams this year at oh, some point. Oh, come on. No, I really do. Yeah, but when does he play? He I tore do his ACL in the that. Super Bowl. No, no, no. I know. it's going to be. That's why he's not on any team right now, and he's not signed anywhere. But I think that the team that will bring him in – post that would would be the would be the Rams. All right, it's underdog fantasy time. Best ball breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. All right, it's time for our next best ball segment. Best ball segment. Jason bring in the Bring in the heat. Yeah, bring well, in the insight. No Kareem Hunt related information here. Or? I mean, well, it's a little too early to declare that. But um, <laughs> here, here's uh, tip of the day: draft Kareem Hunt. <laughs> tip, tip. Kareem Hunt pick of the day. Um, actually, ironically, <laughs> Kareem Hunt might uh, prove to be a bad pick for the point of what I'm about to talk about, um, which is specific to best ball mania. Okay, so if you're playing an underdog and you, you, you know, you're playing with 10 buddies or you're in one of the quick little three person drafts, obviously this does not apply the same. But when you're trying to bring down the millions of dollars, which we want the Foot Clan to do, um, here are some tips. If you're getting in those best ball manias, um, the, the ponies or any of the big tournament style things, here's some more strategy for you to help you win based on the information we have from last year. Number one, there's two tips here. Number one, 
don't reach to complete the stacks. Now, stacks are important. There's higher win rates for quarterback wide receiver stacks, but not when you reach. The best example of this is that last year, Kirk Cousins, who was a late 11th, early 12th round pick, he had a top four win rate at the quarterback position. He was a great pick, but if you picked him a round earlier, he was only the 16th best win rate. Do not reach for, you know, if, if you draft uh, Tyree Kill or Jalen Waddell early and you want to grab Tua, Tua's, a, you know, his ADP is quarterback 18, the 12th round. Don't grab him in the 10th. Let him drop to you. Keep grabbing the best players available. When you reach to complete the stack, you're hurting your team. Don't do it. Mistake number two, and this one I think is is more interesting. It is something I have recently been called out on. Uh, correctly, because I, I, I was unaware of this, so I learned it. I want to bring this to you guys. Where you grab your running backs, specifically your fourth running back. Okay, we talked uh, three weeks ago about kind of the optimal lineups. You want five or six running backs, two or three quarterbacks, two or three tight ends, and then fill the rest of your roster with wide receivers, six through nine uh, wide receivers. When you draft your fourth running back before round 10, you have a, uh, a a bad win rate for advancing on in these underdog tournaments. And that sounds kind of crazy, um, you know, but here's here's what you're doing when you're playing the, the best ball mania. You are predicting a perfect outcome. Right, if you're going to win the tournament, everything has to go right. So if you draft stud running backs early, right, you grabbed CMC with the number two pick because stays you think healthy dominates he stays, stays healthy dominates and you draft, draft James Connor in the third Touchdowns, stays healthy they're, dominates. They're back. Get, right when you add another run you're counting on those running backs to score every week to stay healthy to help you win when you draft that fourth running back who's not going to crack your lineup in the eighth round in the ninth round even in the tenth round it doesn't help you as much as the much more volatile wide receiver position when you shotgun that and you grab wide receivers there your fourth your fifth your sixth your seventh eighth ninth wide receiver is going to crack your lineup more often because they happen to get a long bomb touchdown so don't draft your fourth running back in best ball mania until after the 10th round all right, that was best ball breakdown presented by underdog fantasy start playing on underdog today right now They'll match your first deposit up to $100 if you use the code BALLERS. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode. Some busts, some values, and, uh, man, the NFL season coming quick. Uh, Jason, your Cream Hunt t-shirts should arrive soon. Awesome. Uh, which, ironically, Kyle will buy the exact same ones. They'll just have, like, an X through them so you guys can face off against each other. We so will have a boxing match at some point. Oh, really? Yeah, just for charity. How you feel about that, Kyle? As long as it's for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> Box for the kids. Boxing for kids. Just rope a dope, Kyle. Uh, someone was remembering <laughs> the... Tire me out? <laughs> yeah. You just okay, got to make it past 30 seconds. You're going to be good. I was going to say, just, if you can sustain five to ten seconds of Jason's punching, then he'll be winning. Oh, that's smart. That's smart. I hadn't thought about Let's that plan. Let's turn this into wrestling. I'll lay on you. Just dodge. Just dodge. <laughs> All right. Uh... On behalf of Raisin Nut Brand and the rest of the <laughs> fantasy footballers, take care, everybody. Thank you for supporting the show. Check out the community at jointhefoot.com. Until next time, farewell. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.